Many students are not that fond of poetry, and the older the poetry, the less they like it. And part of that is because the students take it a little too seriously, and one of the reasons the students take it too seriously is because their teachers often take it way too seriously. It seems we often create the impression that people 100, 200, 300 years ago didn't think like us, were somehow more serious about things. But the reality is that there's a lot about life and about people that, well, it certainly hasn't changed in three or four hundred years, and much of it hasn't changed in several thousand years. And if you turn on the radio, it won't take you long to find a song that is talking about exactly the same things that uh, is in much of the poetry that is being taken too seriously. For example, uh, there was a song back in the 70s by Bread, and I know that for many of you the 70s is ancient history, but it's what I know better, and well, you can find your songs, yeah, but whatever your preferences are, if you look, you're going to find something that's uh, about love and sex and things that don't change. In the song by Bread called Make It With You, we have some lyrics. Dreams are for those who sleep. Life is for us to keep. And if you're wondering what this song is leading to, I'd like to make it with you. Yeah, okay, you can uh, argue that the song is or can be about more than sex. I agree. But I don't think you can completely ignore the sexual connotations. A few years later, we have We've Got Tonight by Bob Seger which he says, uh, I know your plans don't include me, but, well, you know, we're both here, we're both lonely, so why don't you stay? And by that he doesn't mean hang around and I'll, I'll brew up some Earl Grey tea and we'll play checkers. Got a pretty good idea of what happens after the song ends. And if you go look at a lot of poetry, it's the same thing. A guy trying to convince a woman to have sex. Blah, blah, blah. Let's have sex. Life is for us to keep. Let's have sex. We're lonely. Let's have sex. Uh, back in the 17th century, Andrew Marvel wrote to his coy mistress. And he says, well, if we had but world enough and time, this coyness lady would be no crime. And later, is, uh, the grave is a fine and private place, but none, I think, do there embrace. Well, blah, 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 let's have sex. And John Donne, a little bit earlier, who's best known for his religious poetry, such as uh, Batter My Heart, O Three-Person God. But he also wrote a poem called The Flea. And in it we have a man trying to convince a woman to have sex. Because, well, you see, this flea has, has bitten both of us. And, well, our blood is is already mingled in this flea, so it's, it's really nothing more for us to go ahead and, and share fluids ourselves. So, come on, why not? And her reply is to pop the flea with her fingernail. And if you want a song for that, you can go listen to Lori Morgan doing What Part of No Don't You Understand? Blah, blah, blah. Let's have sex. So next time you are 
reading a poem and having some trouble with it. Or you, know, you have to read it, but you really don't want to. And yeah, it just doesn't seem to relate. Try looking at it from the perspective of love, sex, and things that don't change. And you'll find that there are more such poems than you may have thought. And not just poems, but you know, plays, books. There's a lot out there. For one that's not love and sex, but doesn't change. Go listen to Dust in the Wind by Kansas, and then read Ozymandias by Shelley. <laughs> and one thing that you should realize is that a lot of these, be it the songs or the old poetry, also have a sense of humor. It's an often dark humor, and, well, with love, sex, and things that don't change, it's often a rather painful sense of humor, especially when we recognize ourselves in it sometimes. But remember that whether it's today, yesterday, 300 years ago, there's love, sex, and things that don't change.